Now, when Anthony told you you have Epstein Barr and Shingles and HHV6, and you all of a sudden looked back and saw you had mono when you were younger, did anything else click for you? Like when you were, when you were thinking of not only yourself but your family, you know, oh, because yes, Anthony yes. talked yeah. about generational things. Yeah. Did, did all the fun stuff that um, your parents went through click for you? That's why when I would help people, I would ask them about their, and like I would ask them like their grandparents and then their parents and sometimes their great grandparents if they could tell me. Because then I could clue into, you know, other type of viruses that may be in the lineage here. So for instance, my grandfather um, of my dad's side had a seizure disorder. They didn't know why. Well, we know why. And he actually had a seizure while he was driving and hit a parked car back in the 60s. And my grandmother had his, you know, the seatbelt to go into the abdomen area. So when he hit the parked car, that seatbelt jabbed into her abdomen. And so she bled internally, and that's how she died. So that was my, my grandmother. Of course, I can't imagine the medical treatments that they had to sustain because she was in the medical field. So that gets passed on. My dad was living, growing up on the farm in Wisconsin, you know, they were exposed to tons of chemicals, you know, and then I have my father here, who always growing up had back pain, sinus infections, teeth problems galore, and in the age of 52, in 1984, he fell over in the doctor's office and was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. That's huge. And they couldn't, he, at that time, you know, I didn't know what that was. I just, and I was in medicine then, but I didn't know. You know, I thought, oh, this is neurological and it's a body attack. I'd always think, why is the body attacking itself? But I didn't know why, but that's what they said. Mm -hmm. But they would do plasmapheresis treatments on him, and I would watch his heart rate drop in the 30s. The guy almost died, you know. He was in the hospital for a year because he didn't have the, the kind that would go to the airway. There are two kinds that, the, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if it's the same now, but, you know, there's two, two, two um, varieties of the um, Guillain-Barre. One is where the air goes to the airway, then you're on a, a ventilator. People walk out of the hospital within a week. That's what was told to me back in the 80s. And then, of course, my dad had the kind where it progressed to the waist. And that's, you know, that yeah. took a lot longer, supposedly. So I watched him deteriorate, well, most of my life with these other symptoms, not knowing that he had shingle HHV6. Now I see it, because he had cardiac, he had the open heart surgeries. He had the kidney failure. He had, um, you know, restless leg syndrome. Like he, he died in a wheelchair. I, I took care of him at his last moments, and literally, medical medium kept me going when he died three years ago. And I tried my best to keep him alive as best I could, but I knew at that point his organs had failed. So do you see where this is going? He's already got yeah. Guillain-Barre in his symptom, or in his system. You know, he's given. You know, he's part of. You know, I got his lineage through the sperm and the ovum, right? And then my mother, she had Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is what we know as third stage Epstein-Barr virus. So you put that combination together, and of course she had a gallbladder out when she gave birth to me. You know, do you see the correlation here? This yep. gets passed down to what I have in my body. And then of course, then we have our daily stuff coming at us. You know, and if we're not detoxing, it's just your whole body being set up for, okay, my body can't handle this anymore, and the liver can't save you. So, yes, huge component to the, and that's why I tell people, I don't know what level you're at, because you've got these other factors to include in that. And how much mercury elixirs did you get back in the days when Abe Lincoln was around and your ancestors, you know, and how much did they take? You see what I'm saying? Or even like, I was, when I was in San Diego, I met with uh, my great aunt, and she was telling me stories about our family lineage where... Um, my my great great grandfather was in World War One and got sprayed by mustard gas. Yes. And ended up in the hospital, and that's how they that's how my great grandfather and my great grandmother met was in this hospital in in, in Britain. So it's like the um, the lineage thing. I mean, if you f look back at your lineage, you can figure out what sort of metals you've been hit with and passed down from generation to generation to generation. I just think it's so funny how these the conventional medicine way of looking at it is 
what sort of diseases or symptoms are in your family family lineages? Do you have any family members that have diabetes? Right. Because that's going to tell them that you possibly have diabetes when they should be looking at an overburdened liver rather than actually looking at to see if that person has diabetes. So it's like if, if conventional medicine actually looked at the metals, the viruses, the overburdened liver, stuff like that, then that would give people uh, an answer rather than just trying to put a Band-Aid over the wound and right, right. prescribe and them of, pharmaceutical. Right. I have a lot of nurses in my background, and they're all, they all died of neurological stuff. It's amazing looking at it now. It's like, wow. It's, it's truly eye-opening, you know, when you see what, yeah. they're, what they were subjected to. And then it gets passed on, you know? That's why it's so critical. You know, the... Like this 37 year old that's taking care of her mother i said please and she's finally doing it she's actually doing the protocol herself because she was showing signs of the liver and there was a lot of obesity in my family and my my <laughs> grand or grandfather on my mother's side he had kidney failure so yeah and they were he was always exposed to chemicals as a janitor in a you know in a school system you know so. yeah <laughs> yep. in yeah. wisconsin they spray you know they spray a lot in wisconsin so i mean oh probably my gosh I, I remember and, and i was you know, I'm only right behind Anthony. If, you know, everyone says, I mean, he look, he's awesome. He looks like he's a kid. But, you know, we grew up in that time. And I, I remember the smells with that. They'd come in big round trucks, you know. And they'd, and everyone would run into the house and close the windows as best you could. Because you could even smell it coming into the house. Because they, like, they were spraying all this stuff, you know, in the, in the trees and whatnot. Horrible smell. Gosh. Oh, I can smell it. How old do you think he... How old do you think Anthony is? I was, I, I th think someone said he's 60, but I, I, I don't know if it is true because he doesn't look 60. But of course, you know, I'm in my, I'm past 55. So, you know, I'm, of course I'm doing medical medium. I know I've, I look like I've aged a little bit, but it's like, I don't, I know people that are my age and they look like they're dead, like they're dying. So, yeah. you know, I just, yeah. there's a lot of my friends. However, you know, he's in, aged, I think he looks like. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter so much to, to everybody, I think. You right. know, it's, it's just the, you know, he's been doing this his whole life, right? So yeah. he could, you know, he could look like he's in his 30s when he could be like 70 or 80. Who, who, right. who knows? I mean, right? we're all supposed to look, and we're not supposed to. I, mean, I love it when he said, we're not supposed to be tired or fatigued. We're supposed yeah. to be living quality lives, you know? And like I say to people, yeah. when my dad was dying and, his deathbed I, he lived at my he didn't go into a nursing home but he had hospice at my sister's house where I took care of him and my and I was doing all these protocols and I was like banana peels uh, you name it potatoes you name it and they would just go at my uncle or my brother-in-law would look at me and say god why do you do all this and I said I'm not going to be in that hospital bed I'm not yeah. when I get older I'm going to be living yeah. a quality life as best I can yeah. now that I know the truth yeah. so I don't want anyone to yeah that's what life's about it's not about being sick and being stuck in a bed or a nursing home you know it's living your your full life exactly. right exactly